Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back to another episode of Train Sim Classic. Today we're down at London King's Cross in the fabulous Armstrong Powerhouse Enhanced Class 387. Uh, the era is pretty much modern day. We've got some, uh, we've got a Satsuma over there, we've got a, a Grand Central 180 and a lovely Class 91. I guess it's not quite modern day because uh, the 91 has a rake of Mark IVs in the uh, Coca-Cola can Virgin Trains East Coast livery. Uh, they have all gone now as far as I'm aware. They're, uh, they're uh, all in the new LNER livery, aren't they? The, the Intercity livery. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a couple of years ago. I don't know if we've got a date on it. Uh, we're going to be driving up to Cambridge today. Uh, we're not going to be driving all the way to Cambridge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into sort of half an hour uh, videos because I think an hour and a half is just a little bit long for me to talk when it's not a live stream, uh, but also when, uh, you know, I'd, I'd happily do that as a live stream, but I think just me on my own chattering away, uh, it's a little bit difficult. So I think what we're going to do today is we're going to drive up as far as Welling Garden City. That's about half an hour. Uh, and then part two, we'll drive up to, I don't know, should we go to Baldock? 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 Uh, yep. Yeah. That's about half an hour, and then part three will finally drive all the way through to Cambridge. So I'm quite excited to do this. Uh, right, there we go. We're, uh, I think it's time to depart, isn't it? Yeah, I'm quite excited to do this. Uh, it's a Magic Toad scenario. There's a link in the description if you want to go and download it. Uh, I have driven part of this already. I drove up to Welling Garden City the other day, uh, well, last night, as it happens, after work, uh, and then I just got tired and went to bed. Uh, and it was a really, really enjoyable scenario, so I thought, do you know what, I'd like to do this on video for, uh, for you lot. We've got a class uh, 700 coming in there. Now, as far as I'm aware, from what it says on the description of the scenario, this is actually meant to be operated by a class 700, but obviously Thameslink, Great Northern, Southern, uh, they're all like the same franchise now, aren't they? Uh, so all operated by uh, Govia. So they do interchange the units sometimes, they swap them out, particularly between Thameslink and Great Northern. Uh, you tend to find 700s crop up over here all the time. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side there, there's a Thameslink one. It does look a bit weird seeing a Thameslink uh, liveried train in King's Cross. Obviously, back when it was first Capital Connect, they didn't tend to swap them out that much, did they? Because you had 377s, uh, you had, uh, well, they were mainly 319s, weren't they, in, uh, on the Thameslink when it was first Capital Connect? And, of course, up here was 317s and uh, and the, uh, the 365s. Oh, I miss the 365s. Lovely trains. Really, really lovely trains. So, uh, yeah, it's a two-Charlie head code as this. We're going to be operating a... Uh, uh, semi-fast service. We're calling at Finsbury Park, Potter's Bar, Hatfield, Welling Garden City, Welling North, Nebworth, Stevenage, Hitchin, Letchworth, Baldock, Ashwell and Morden, Royston, Meldreth, Shepreth and uh, Foxton, then finally Cambridge. So uh, yeah, quite a few stops but at the same time we've got a little bit of fast running uh, on route. It's going to be awesome. It's just going to be awesome. The, uh, the scenery traffic is all done to a realistic timetable today, so we should see plenty of stuff. Right, there we go, we'll, uh, we'll keep... Oh, hang on, yeah, I forget we're going uphill. Yeah, there's always plenty to see on the East Coast Main Line, isn't there? It's, uh, it's like any line, isn't it? Coming straight out of London, there's just loads of traffic to see. It's pretty awesome, I love it. Uh, of course, we've got all the 717s uh, operating the stopping services up to Welling Garden City. And then do we become an all-stop service, I wonder, after uh, Welling Garden City? Welling North, Nebworth, Stevenage, Hitchin. Yes, we do. Oh, hang on, we're speeding. Uh, there we go, bit of breakage. Yeah, I guess how it works is that the uh, the 717s on the Moorgate operate all stops up to Welling Garden City. These run semi-fast. And then from Welling Garden City, the Cambridges must be the all-stop services to Hitchin. And then after that, it seems that the uh, the Peterboroughs operate all stops. So it's like the the sort of summer semi fast, summer fast, uh, summer slow. Quite a uh, quite an interesting way of doing it. Southwest trains do something fairly similar, don't they? Where uh, they run express and then become stoppers for a certain distance to some fully express. It's it's a really good way of making sure that things don't get too clogged up. Another three eight seven coming the other way there. You 
can see a 717 just coming under uh, on the left there from uh, Morgate. That's going to bend around and join us shortly. We need to actually start thinking about braking for Finsbury Park, don't we? Look at that, can we see that there? I love it when you get two trains racing alongside each other. Uh, I don't know who's going to uh, who's going to enter the station first. I think it's probably going to be that chap on the left there. The problem is, is when you get two trains racing like this, it's easy to forget where you are and go shooting through the station. <laughs> We've all been there, haven't we? There we go. We've got another class 700 on the right there. There's plenty to see, isn't there? Really good scenario. The only downside with Magic Toad scenarios is because they are uh, because all the traffic is realistic and true to life. There are usually quite a few requirements with them, uh, which, weirdly enough, I do have all the requirements today. Oh, come on, stop. There we go, look at that. Into neutral, bang the doors open. So how magic to... I mean, that's a pretty good stop, isn't it? Look at that. That'll do. Oops, 700's off over there. That'll do, I'm happy with that. Oh, we've not actually put Cambridge on the front, have we? There we go, we'll... Uh, Cambridge, there we go, everyone knows where we're going now. Now how Magic Toad does it is, uh, if you look, there's no departure time on, on any of these stations, uh, because we're not dispatched, it's a driver-only service, so we've got to keep an eye on here, there, so he's put all the times in there. We're not actually due out until 32 at Finsbury Park, so we have to sit and wait now, and do it ourselves. It's quite an interesting way of doing it, so you don't get told when to close the doors. You do get your platform duties complete, but if you just set off early, you'll just catch red signals and uh, and you'll be leaving everywhere early. So you've got to sort of manage your own timekeeping, as you would with a DOO service. It's a really, really interesting way of doing it. And uh, and the first time I did it, I just ignored them all. And, right, platform duties complete, bang the doors shut, off we go, and I got told off for, uh, for not doing it properly. Right, there we go, we'll shut the doors, because it's 30 seconds prior to departure. There we go, we've got interlock, and away we go. Potter's Bar, 10 point, uh, oh, hang on, we're sliding. Come on, train. Potter's Bar, 10 and a half miles, or 10 and a quarter miles, actually. Sliding again. Ooh, struggling to get away from Finsbury Park here, what's this? There we go, that's a bit better, we've, uh, we've got traction. Because you're trying to go too fast too soon. Right, straight up to 55, no messing about. Oh, we're sliding again. Oh, look at that, Grand Central's going past. That'll be the one we've just seen in King's Cross. Do you know what, I'm honestly surprised, and I don't want to tempt fate, but I'm surprised we haven't had a crash to desktop with, uh, with the 180 in the vicinity. You can always tell when, uh, oh hang on, why are, the, are they the headlights? Why are the headlights on? <laughs> oh, train sim. Never fails to amaze, does it? I mean, I guess they could be the tail lights, couldn't they? I mean, they're not. I think it's, oh hang on, we're speeding again. I'm too busy watching that Grand Central. Just break a little bit. Ooh, a little bit of lag around here. Flipping heck. In fact, I know why there's a little bit of lag around here. You will see in just a moment. Look, we've got a full full depot here. At Bounds Green. It's not Bounds Green, is it? It's Hornsey EMU depot, you blithering idiot. And Hornsey carriage sidings, that's of course more of a Thameslink depot, isn't it, than LNER. But uh, we do have LNER on the left hand side. I mean, if you actually look. It's quite a bit of, uh, quite a few trains in there, which is what's causing our performance issues. Look at that, they're flipping everywhere. Oh, it's a 717, We're, uh, we've ca caught him up again. It must have been an empty stop movement then. Yeah, bounce green's further up, isn't it? If you notice, now that we're past all that, <laughs> everything starts to run a bit smoother again. You 
you'd think the Grand Central would have got a bit further ahead, wouldn't you? But uh, we, we seem to be almost catching him up. Zuma going the other way. I wonder where that's come from. Well, it's it's going to be the Leeds or uh, or Edinburgh, isn't it? Although to be fair, some of them start at Newcastle, some start in Hull. There's uh, there's plenty of different places it could have come from, actually, isn't there? There we go. Right, bounds green on the right hand side now. Oh, stand back from the platform, missus. A little bit close to the edge for uh, comfort there. There you go. You can just see the uh, the LNER over in bounds green there. I'm surprised it's still 60 out of King's Cross. You'd, uh, you know, up to here. It, it, you just think it would be 75 a little bit sooner than that, don't you? It just seems quite slow. I mean, to be honest with you, we called at Finsbury Park. I don't know why we've not gone on the fasts. I was sat pondering this last night. Like, why wouldn't... I guess if there's a path on the slow, we may as well take the slow so that the faster stuff can overtake. But, I mean, these 387s can do 110 miles an hour, can't they? So it just seemed a little bit odd that you wouldn't put this on the fast doing 110. You know, I mean, where are we now? Max speed 110, yeah, there you go. That this won't go up on the fast and then just cross over at Potter's Bar. It'd give a much quicker journey, wouldn't it, to Potter's Bar from Finsbury Park? I, I guess maybe... Oh, look, the Grand Central's still there. <laughs> are we going to go sailing past him? Has he, has he stopped at that red? No, probably not. But like, I think at this point they can only do 100 on this section of track. Isn't it 100 until after uh, Welling North? Possibly, off the top of my head. Yeah, I think maybe it is 100 until about Welling North and then it increases, or maybe it's 110. So yeah, we'd easily be able to keep line speed and I reckon off the mark a 387 would be a lot quicker. Uh, up to speed than a 180, with it obviously being electric rather than diesel. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. Seven hundred going the other way. Straight into a tunnel. Look at that. The uh, I, I think the thing that Train Sim struggles with is the uh, the shadows. It doesn't seem to go as dark as quickly as it perhaps should. Like the light now, this should get gradually lighter, but when you go into a tunnel, I think it should become dark a lot quicker. I think it does that quite well on Train Sim World. You do sort of feel a little bit like a second class citizen running a, uh, a semi fast service up the slow line. I guess the good thing is, uh, I mean, we're running with the uh, with the DSD. That's me pressing it uh, there rather than it actually coming on. With this not having a speed set feature on the 387, obviously it does on the 377, but uh, on this it's deactivated. I guess 387s just did they order them without it? I don't know. It seems a bit of an odd decision. Like the 377 came with all the bells and whistles. This is a sort of a bit more of a uh, a bit more of an economy spec model. It's like having a Ford Fiesta EcoBoost uh, one litre versus a Ford Fiesta ST. You know, it's it's sort of uh, or a, or a Vignali. I know they don't do the, uh, the the Vignali Fiesta. I don't think they do. But like a Mondeo, for instance, it's sort of like yeah, we've we've ordered this brilliant spec 377 for Southern, and then we've ordered the 387. Yeah, exactly the same. I mean, you can see there's even the buttons there, but they're just not operable. Sort of just feels like they've ordered a bit more of an economy spec, doesn't it? Ah, oh, we're slowing down. Get a bit of power on. I guess these, when they were ordered, were never intended 
or were they intended for the East Coast? I don't know. I mean, they they were originally they came in on Thameslink, didn't they? The uh, the three eight seven to replace three one nines, and then of course they were bumped off themselves when all the seven hundreds arrived. Were they like a short term order thing? I, d I don't know to be honest with you. I mean, if you look inside, they've all got southern uh, interiors, haven't they? I guess that's probably from uh, from when it was Thameslink, so they could swap them out. I don't know, it's one of them, I don't really know an awful lot about this network. I, I, the Great Northern side of things, I know quite a bit about that, because obviously I've done quite a bit of East Coast uh, travelling in my time. But uh, but yeah, all the, all the sort of spurs off on the Great Northern. Network like Cambridge and Hartford and all around there. I, there's not really a lot that I know about it. Kings Lynn, that's another one. Uh, yeah, but it's I don't really know an awful lot. A lot of the Thameslink stuff as well, the Brighton to Bedford bit, I can just about do that. But there's all sorts of other like Seven Oaks and all around there. I really need to make use of you know my days off more and actually go travel into these places and see it. But it's one of them, isn't it? Sometimes on your days off, you're that knackered, you just need to sit and stare at some drywall. And, uh, and you know, just sort of come to terms with with life, you know. <laughs> Once you've done a few YouTube videos, you find your day's gone. Right here, yeah, fast approaching Potter's Bar. You always find with Trensim, don't you, that, uh, you know, like, when you're going up the East Coast in real life, or the West Coast for that matter, it just seems to be train after train after train that's passing you. You know, there's so much to see. When you're driving it on Trensim, even if you put a real timetabled service in, you just don't seem to see that much scenery. Like, it just feels like you should see so much more up here. Driver's phone's going off in the cab, flipping heck. That's not good. Right, there we go. Into neutral. Door release. Oh, what's this? Oh, an LNER coming past. Lovely. Quite like that. There we go. Let's have a uh, let's have a shot for the old thumbnail. I don't know if we'll use that. Oh, it's one of them, isn't it? Right. We'll we'll do the old print screen thing. There we go. For some reason, F12 has stopped working. I don't know if there's been an update or since I last installed it. I don't know. Right. Hang on. Where are we? Potter's Bar. We're out at 43. So we'll uh, we'll just wait a little bit longer. course making use of the mirror there I guess we don't use the mirror anymore on these things because these have got uh, the old scary cameras on the side right there we go oh what's that coming the other way we're missing something fast They're a good-looking unit, aren't they, the Electro Stars? I, I love them. I mean, they're scary driver-only operated machines, aren't they? But uh, but I think they're a really good-looking set. Comfortable to travel on. I mean, I know the 387s have got the uh, the newer generation ironing board seats, uh, as they're known. As you can, uh, as are depicted here, they're very uh, firm seats, aren't they? Nicknamed the ironing board seats, of course, because they are shit like an ironing board. Hmm. Oh, are we coming over onto the... Uh, no, we won't be going onto the fast, will we? What's this 55 about up here?
God, that LNER was shifting once. He's on, what's that, double yellows? 717 coming the other way now. I reckon at about half a mile we'll stick a notch of brake in. There we go. Ooh, straight up to 75. Little bit of coast, little bit of brake. That'll do. I mean, what time are we due into Hadfield? Not Hadfield, that's, uh, that's a bit further up north. Hatfield, 8.47. Oh right, it's 55 because we have to, uh, it's one of these stations where we'll have to weave round the back. Again, for a semi-fast service, look at that, that was pretty good uh, judgement of braking there. Oh, I'm thrilled, very pleased. Oh, another, uh, is that a 700 over there? Another photo. Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll uh, we'll pause there. That'll do. Oh, you can always get a better shot when you pause like that. That's lovely. That's nice. Right, hang on. How do, how do we? There we go. Print screen. Lovely. I think you can use Control and S as well, but I don't know why the Steam overlay, the F12, just doesn't work anymore. It's very bizarre. Oh, the LNER's on the green now. Guy's totally shifted, hasn't he? He's gone. Right, next train. Whatever's through next. Come on. That LNER will be catching that Grand Central. Actually, it probably won't, to be honest with you, because, uh, I mean, Grand Central, what's that? If it's on a Bradford interchange, it'll be next stop Doncaster. And if it's on a Sunderland, it'll be next stop York. So, uh, yeah, I don't think the LNER would, because, I mean, they might stop at... Stevenage or Peterborough, Grantham, Retford, Newark, one of those. Not Newark, Retford. Grand Central are another operator out there that I think the, uh, the Class 802 would really, really suit. You know, on the wires all the way up to Doncaster and then. Uh, after Doncaster on the diesel around Nottingley, Wakefield, Kergate and all that to Bradford and then back again as soon as you get to Doncaster, pan up, way off you go to London. Hull trains really seem to, uh, they've got a really nice fleet Hull trains. I've never been on one but I've seen plenty of pictures and they look absolutely fantastic. Racing round to Hatfield. Flipping at, we're perhaps uh, approaching a little bit faster. Oh, another three eight seven going through. Come on, slow down. Flipping heck. <laughs> I mean, the brakes are pretty good on these things, aren't they, to be honest with you? What time are we due in here? Ooh, we're due in at uh, 47 and due out at 48, so it's just a door open, door shut kind of a job here. Righty-o. Right, as soon as everyone's boarded and alighted, we'll be off again. We're at uh, Welling Garden City, our next stop. This is where I was on a... Uh, oh, hang on, look, 91 going the other way. Oh, sensational. Come
God, we missed that, didn't we? Right, door's shut. Yeah, if it were me on a driver on the train, I'd be over at this window. Leaning out with me, uh, with me whistle. Hurrying them along. Come on, got places to be, places to go. Oh, we will actually. When we get to Welling Garden City, we'll get to stop in the executive platforms, won't we? That'll be nice. Nice treat for us all. Because obviously you've got the two platforms on the left-hand side there, uh, on, well, what will be on our left-hand side there for the 717s to, uh, to terminate in, whereas we'll stop on the platform on the like, the right hand side of the left hand platforms obviously we're not going to stop over there are we because that's for the southbound trains but yeah we'll be uh, we'll be on the right hand line Ooh, exciting i'm imagining there'll be quite a few 717s parked up at welling garden city there usually is we had just a little spike of lag there didn't we uh, so that would oh hang on that's the first time actually in this episode i think the dsd has gone off without me manually setting it off Oh, we've got a yellow. Goodness me. A little bit too... Uh, there we go, that's better. I mean, I imagine this will probably be a double yellow. That'll be because we'll be waiting for something else fast to come past us, won't we? Oh no, it's a single yellow. Right, okay. Oh, well, we'd better slow down then. I mean, we can come hurtling into Welling Garden City because the signal's at the end of the platform. So long as we don't go hurtling through Welling Garden City because then we'll be in trouble. We'll have to explain to our uh, management why we've, uh, why we've done that. I mean, that's quite a serious offence, isn't it? Running a red light on the railway. Right, well, there we go, Welling Garden City. That's where we're going to finish today. In the next episode, uh, we are going to continue from Welling Garden City. Where did I say we were going? Uh, Baldock. Baldock? Baldock. One of those, one of those. Uh, we're going to be continuing to there. So uh, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do click the like button. It's always appreciated. And uh, if you haven't already, do make sure you subscribe. I mean, I've told you what's happening in the next episode. That's very exciting, isn't it? So uh, do make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on any of that. Did that a little bit early, didn't I, really? Right, here we go. Coming up to a red. Perhaps a tad fast, but I guess we're, we're planning on stopping, aren't we? Oh, there's an eight-car stop board there. We'll, uh, we'll stop there. Hang on, that's not going to work. The back end's not on. Well, we're going to go past the eight-car stop board. I don't know if that's just in the wrong place, maybe. There we go. Yes, hopefully. I'll see you all next time. Cheerio! Goodbye for now.